today's main discussion topic fading canadian charm now is it really fading or is it news channels or media outlets just creating a bit of a blitz about in the recent very recent past obviously there has been increase in a negative sentiment towards increasing immigration within the canadian citizens population residents whatever you want to call that uh, they don't see immigration as beneficial as it was touted as, as earlier by the liberals right so when liberals came into power the immigration quota was only 265000 annually right and they have increased it and they have increased it and they have increased it now we are looking at half a million quotas for for immigration but they have what they have done is for 2024 and then 2025 is half a million 2024 is 485 2025 is half a million and then they stabilized it at 2026 to half a million they obviously are listening and they are obviously feeling the sentiment of general public and they don't really want to ruffle any more feathers at this point of time their their poll ratings is at all time low they are not looking to sort of create a bigger mess for themselves that they already have there is also a bigger issue which is of the housing crisis as i was just talking to you earlier earlier few months back the housing crisis was credited to international students that at that point of time there was a lot of international student numbers in play right? all news articles media channels were talking about hey 900000 international students are coming to canada or they are already in canada or they've already been approved that was automatically projecting into everybody's head the the fact that so many people coming into canada what is that going to do with the immigration programs what is that going to do with the housing crisis prices are rising the cost of inflation is very very high right now so international students took the brunt of it and students were not the favor of the month and then the immigration target would be announced the public was quite very keen that the immigration numbers go up now within the canadian population it includes the permanent residents it includes the citizens it also includes the temporary residents who are currently in canada as of right now as per the last update the number of temporary residents in canada it was indicated as 2.2 million i don't agree with this 2.2 million i think the number is much higher and also keep in mind that this number is dynamic but i think this 2.2 million is closer to 2.5 million people now if it is 2.5 million residents who are there in canada at this point of time i would assume out of this 2.5 million people majority would want to become permanent residents or would want to have some sort of permanent stay in canada which basically means as and how these numbers will keep increasing because mind you each year more and more and more international students come to canada and as these international students come to canada the ones who are already in canada they are graduating they are becoming you know they're getting their work permit status uh, a lot of the workers who are currently in canada they are going to be losing their status because their work permits will expire we haven't heard about post graduate work permit extensions for 2024 in my opinion it may may not happen don't don't see much happening there in its entirety it has created a lot of frustration it has created fatigue i think fatigue is the right word you feel more encouraged you feel more motivated when you see things moving right the draws are happening people are getting through people are getting confirmed people are happy they're talking about things that they're talking about their success stories they're talking about okay they made it to canada they they, they lived here one year two years three years now they bought a house now they bought a car now they're doing very well so all these collective positivity is what creates the factor where you would say the charm is not fading but it is absolutely uh, increasing or or everybody wants to come to canada that is what the game was a couple of years back but the first time sean fraser came out and announced the multi year immigration levels plan and the newspapers were plastered with headlines canada wants 1.2 million people da 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 and like you know the, i remember the indian newspapers and the agents in india made out one page advertisement saying 1.2 million canada is desperately in need of people everybody please come and apply and so that you know you can all get a red carpet welcome but that wasn't how it, it worked out as of today people inside canada with all the credentials with work experience in canada education in canada high ielts scores language skills scores even they at this point of time are struggling to find a pathway that will help them become a permanent resident but nothing nothing really is is happening for them there are also people outside canada who have been wanting to come to canada who have done everything possible they could technically uh, but are still on the fence they can't really do anything and and that has what has created this this feeling of frustration people are very antsy about it right now but by and large outside canada what has happened is politically obviously the the ruling party the government did not do itself any favors they 
they chose to pick a fight with India. I'm not going to get into the debate of the right reasons or the wrong reasons or what, what was the background. That's not for me to talk about. It continues as of right now. The political standoff continues. Even the most recent comment made by the Trade Minister of Canada was the trade talks are on hold until the whole investigation, those are completed. With this environment that gets created, uh, obviously, we all know, right, how Indian media operates, right? They only need sensationalizing type to sort of make it feel as if it's all doom and gloom in Canada, right? But obviously, it's not that. A, a small scuffle between two people in a mall is projected as a big, big, huge riot that happened amongst a big group of people. So those, those kind of projections. But what that has done is that has created a big negative image for the whole country. To, to the effect that so many people were worried that their, stu their children who are international students in Canada, are they safe? Are they not safe? Suddenly they started looking for options elsewhere. They started looking, instead of sending their children to Canada because they were worried that they might not be safe, they wanted to send their children to different countries trying to sort of you know look at other options. Immigration wise, aren't you guys already fed up of getting those text messages from the agents in India, in Pakistan, in UAE, um, I don't know, in, in all the countries wherever you might be that who, who promise you PR to Canada in six months. Don't you sometimes feel and asking those people how in the world can you promise PR for anybody in six months when the government itself are not able to deliver six months in most cases on what basis but that's what happens. It's a fatigue which is setting in, in in a lot of cases. The negative sentiment, it is setting in in a lot of cases. The frustration of not having to get through is creating in a lot of cases. And of course, then there is this ongoing trend on social media. Hey, I want, I came to Canada, but I didn't like it. I want to go back. Uh, well, go back. There is a saying, right? Kisi ko mukammal jahan nahi milta. As in, you can never find complete paradise anywhere. There is no perfect country, there is no perfect city, there is no perfect place anywhere in the world. You will always have issues. You will always find reasons to like, dislike. And we all are individuals. We all have individual exposure. We all have different backgrounds, different uh, lifestyles, different choices, different uh, you know perspectives. And my perspective will not necessarily, uh, you know, be in agreement with yours and yours not necessarily with mine. And it moves on to so many people. So people, when they make these videos and people, when they comment on, on Facebook, when they comment on different platforms, I don't like Canada and I'm going back. Well, obviously, a lot of you who are coming from very strong economic backgrounds, you have good salaries, good economic background, uh, you have very, very strong financial uh, support. And then after all that, you chose to come to Canada, you come here, you see the life, the lifestyle can be quite a struggle in the beginning, at least uh, first one year, two years, it can be quite depressing. You're far away from your family, your friends, the festivals can be very, very depressing because you miss your family, you miss your friends. Uh, and then the weather, obviously the winters can make it a bit gloomy and, and it all has a, an aggregating effect on your mental health, on your, uh, on your complete projection of the country that you were hoping and expecting versus what it is and then obviously some of you choose to stay back some of you choose to go back now of the people who go back let's say there are 10 in number but everything projects it as there are 10,000 in that number which is not the fact because if there are those 10,000 who are leaving trust me there is another 1 million who is waiting in the queue to come in the minute these 10,000 leave if they could exchange places they would very easy happily uh, do that but it's the narrative that goes out which makes it sound as if it's the worst place possible if that was the case why would so many want to come if that was the case why why so many who do come choose to stay back of course a lot of people also used canada as a springboard to go to the us right this recent 10,000 H-1B workers. I mean, I don't expect all the H-1B workers to come to Canada. I don't expect them to stay put. The minute they will get something here, they will return back. Similarly, if you are coming from a very, very strong financial background, very, very strong employment background, very, very strong economic background, once you come to Canada and you are not prepared and you do not understand the way taxation works and if that is going to sort of push you back and if that is going to sort of throw you off then of course you're going to struggle but all these small small things the negative sentiment these people who want to go back and obviously are there all over social media the current political situation the fatigue which has been causing and the whole difficulty level that has been created within the immigration programs not because the programs are difficult but because of the high demand versus the, the limited uh, supply 
all of this collectively has created the sentiment that Canada is not charming anymore. Uh, you know. But then if not Canada, then what? That is question then, right? If you don't come, if you're looking to migrate, how many options do you have? You have Australia, you have New Zealand, you have Denmark, you have Germany, you have France, uh, you have the US, you have England. Uh, I don't know, some other couple of other countries, maybe you can, you can throw all in, into the hat. But of all these countries that I've just named, and maybe other couple that you're going to throw into the hat, how many are easy to get to? And how many will you find easy to finally settle and establish yourself? Not too many, to be very honest. US, absolutely not the easiest to get into. Uh, England, again, the same thing. Germany, language is a very, very big barrier. Same with France. Uh, if, of course, French is not your uh, language already. Uh, Denmark, it's a Scandinavian country. If you have a problem with the winters here, hello, God help you if you go to Denmark. Where, where else are you going to sort of set up? Australia, New Zealand. Now, with Australia New Zealand, they themselves, their immigration programs are making it much more difficult. Uh, there are so many people from Australia and New Zealand who are now choosing to come to Canada. The way the whole immigration programs of Canada are, they tend to fare better in terms of choice, in terms of how people come. And of course, the quotas are much more than what Australia and New Zealand has to This is the general sentiment. If you can get to any of these countries and if that is your end goal, then by all means do. Uh, other than that, I think Canada would continue to have people come to Canada. The point is that by and large, the sentiment is the, the Canadian charm fading. Uh, fading primarily because of the reasons what I've talked about, but I don't see the rush going down anytime soon. And until then, stay safe, take care, and stay forever hopeful.